Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise your holy name, Jehovah. Jehovah the Lord, Jehovah Nisi, we praise your holy name, we praise your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To those of you listening today, this message is entitled, Your Identity in Christ. Identity. But before I begin, I want to say that this will show on Facebook during our time at 1 p.m. and at 9 a.m. in Kenya time. So, Father God, may your spirit fall fresh on us as we hear your word, as we study your word, as we preach your word, as we speak your word of God, fall fresh on us. Let your Holy Spirit guide us, Father God. I ask that you empty me of me and fill me with you, O Lord. And then the words that come out of my mouth, Father, fears the hearts, the minds, and souls of those listening to your Holy Spirit, not by might nor by power, but by your Holy Spirit, O God. Father God, let this message transform those who listen to it, O God. Let it minister to our innermost being, Father, so we can be even closer to you and identify our identity in you, in your Son, Jesus Christ, O God. Lord, O God, I praise your holy name and I bless everyone that is listening at the sound of my voice, O Lord. We praise you because you're worthy of all praise, glory, and honor. Before I begin, I'd like to say that this is more of a study than a preaching, although um, we're guided by the Holy Spirit, so therefore it may turn into something else we don't know, but here we go. If I was to ask you who you are, you will most likely uh, tell me that you are a father, a mother, a brother, a sister, uh, you may even throw in your job title, you are a carpenter, or a plumber, or an executive, etc. Et Those things are not our identity. So most people uh, struggle with their identity. A lot of us um, struggle with it um, for many reasons. Maybe it's in the upbringing of our childhood, maybe it's in the in our culture, maybe it's the way that things have happened in our lives by some type of event that makes us think that we have a different identity than what we think we, have, we are or have. A lot of people usually um, make the mistake of going by the opinions of other people to identify themselves. I know that I, for one, have struggled with that for a long time. I praise God that he delivered me from that. Um, we seek God's approval and not our own. So therefore, before we move on, we have to know our identity. And we must know why that identity exists. Because right now we're teaching the disciples, uh, making disciples class to the churches in Kenya. And uh, this message goes right along with those types of teaching. You have to know who you are in the kingdom in order to be effective, to be an influencer, to make a change, to create change, to take control of atmospheres, to cast out demons, to cast out anything and deliver people from bondage. Salvation is always our ultimate goal. So, who are you and what defines you? What is your identity? That's a question many people struggle to answer. I know that I did for a long, long time. Here in the USA, children become teenagers at the age of 13. By the age of 15, they are able to get what they call their permit to drive. They cannot drive alone, they have to drive with an adult that is 18 or older. Now, at the age of 16, they can get their own driver's license and are free to drive alone. They cannot purchase alcohol, they cannot purchase cigarettes, blah, 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 or things of that nature. By the time that you are 18 years old in the United States, you can serve in our armed forces. So, but you still cannot buy alcohol, you can buy cigarettes, I believe, 
and think that's the things of the world. Um, and uh, you can't rent a car. You cannot go anywhere and rent a car because the only time that they will rent a car to you is at the age of 25. Why the age of 25? Because, I'm sorry, let me go back just a second. So at 18, you can serve our armed forces. You can fight for our country. By the age of 21, you are at legal age to purchase alcoholic beverages, etc. But you can't rent a car. Not till the age of 25. It is proven that the brain for a, anyone does not fully develop until the age of 25. So the rental companies do not rent to anyone under that age because they don't feel they have the capacity to take care of a vehicle that is worth so much money and the safety of others. And let's face it, when we are teenagers, sometimes we can tend to be reckless and so on and so forth. So between the age of 13 to 25, we're telling our children, you've grown up. At 13, you're a teenager. At 16, you can get your permit. At 15, I mean. At 16, you can drive. At 18, you can serve the country. At 21, you can buy alcohol. At 25, you can rent a car. So most often than not, we have people that lose their identity in that whole process because when is it that you're fully grown up? Is it 18? Is it 21? Or is it 25? So that's just to give you an example. Too often people base their identities on what they do from their jobs to their roles in their relationship, like a mother or father or whatever. They're finding themselves by those pursuits. But by doing so, they significantly limit their lives. The truth is that God intends for all people to find their identity in Jesus Christ. If you're a Christian, your identity encompasses all the abundance of being a beloved child of God. Here's how you can start living your life fully in Christ, keeping in mind that your identity is found in Christ. Use this list that I am about to give to you um, of things God, that God calls you and how he identifies you to remind yourself who you are in Christ. First and foremost, don't let the enemy take anything away from you and thinking that you are anything less than a child of God. If you are saved and you have accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, you're considered a saint. The fact that you have placed your trust in Jesus Christ is enough to qualify you to be a saint, even though you will struggle with sin while you live in this fallen world, you, your core identity as a Christian is as a saint, not a sinner. And you can always count on Jesus to help you overcome sin in your life. Rely on his help to resist temptation. When you do sin, confess and repent. Maintain attitude of humility, gratitude for God's grace. When you repent for something, you are literally stepping on top of it. You're saying, no more. This is gone. This is finished. I am not doing this anymore. And we thank God for his grace. Hallelujah. Let us turn to Ephesians 2, 19. Therefore, now therefore, you are no longer strangers or foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God. Colossians 1, 11 through 13, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in his inheritance of the saints in light. One of the things that points out here is endurance and patience. When we go forward in our walk with God, one of the hardest things to overcome 
is having faith, believing in the unseen. And we become impatient. We become impatient. We become anxious. We want answers. We don't know why. The things of God are always higher. They're always good. But sometimes we struggle because in our identity, we may have doubted everything in our lives. So when we come into the church, we may come and bring that, um, that uh, baggage with us of not having an identity, not knowing what to do, having doubt in yourself and your own um, insecurities and things like that. I know that I did and still do at times have to deal with some things that, you know, won't poke up. And anyway, but God gives us endurance and He gives us patience, giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Now, let us go to Romans 8, 27. Love the Lord, all you saints. The Lord preserves the faithful. He preserves the faithful. Now, let's go to Ephesians 3, 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is breadth and length and depth and height. Notice how here we're talking about breadth, length, depth, and height. What do you think that means? We'll get to it in a minute. Now, one of the things that people always do is say, when we have these cliches in the Christian um, community, how are you doing? I am blessed and highly favored. Well, first of all, if you're a believer, you are already blessed. God has given you the greatest blessing of all, Himself. No matter what other blessings God may or may not choose to send into your life, you can always be confident that God himself will be with you, loving you and working everything in your life out for your good purpose. When you trust him to do so, when you trust him to do so. God also brings many different specific blessings into your life regularly, making a habit of reflecting on those blessings every day or every week and thanking Him for them. I always say, like in the song, 10,000 Reasons, God may be doing 10,000 things for us in one day, and sometimes we only know it's three. And rarely do we ever thank Him for it. If you have a roof over your head, if you have food on your table, and you are able to get around, there is no reason for you not to be thankful. And even if you weren't able to do so, you still be thankful. We thank God in the good and in the bad. Psalm 1, 1 through 3. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sits in the company of mockers. But those who delight in the law of the Lord and who meditate on his law day and night. The person is like a tree planted by a stream of water which yields its fruit in season and whose lead does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. And I pray that you're taking note as you're listening to this. And God is able to bless you abundantly, abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will be abound in every good work. Let me pause there for a minute. So, if God can bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, will abound in every good work. If that is the case, 
which is the case, that God has given us more than abundance. I always used to tell the, the, the youth and youth group when I would preach to them, I would say, you have no idea how much of an abundance you have here in the United States. If you want an apple, you can go to Walmart and there's a hundred thousand apples. That's abundance. But right now we're talking about the kingdom of God. There's an abundance ready for us as we walk this walk in all things at all times, having all that you need abound in every good works. There is no reason for a Christian to be bored. There is no reason for a Christian to sit at home throughout the entire week and do nothing, nothing for the kingdom of heaven, nothing for the kingdom of God. Not preach, not go out, not worry about their neighbor, not talk to their neighbor, not pray for your pastors, not pray for the people at the congregation, not pray for your government, not pray. And then people whine, and why do I have this? You have already been blessed. You have all things that he has already provided for you to do good works. So why are you sitting and not standing up and rising up? In this time and season, the church is needed to rise up. We need the church to rise up. We have riots going on. We have viruses going on. We have terrible things going on throughout the entire world, not just here in the United States, everywhere. Why are you asleep? Wake up. He said, God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So why are you sitting? You can reach to a neighbor. You don't have to have a hundred thousand people listening to you. You can start with one. And one spark can light up. One match, one spark can light a forest fire. It will spread because when you sow, God will make sure that it grows and it will go on and on and on and on because disciples make other disciples. You appreciate it. How many times have we felt unappreciated by our families, by our friends? Sometimes people take advantage, and that is because we allow it. But, and even in our church, are we appreciated for what we do? Let me tell you something. This is not my ministry. This is God's ministry. He just happened to make me the person who leads. This is not about me. This is about all of us. And we together can rise up. Together we can learn from each other. Together we can hold each other accountable. Together we can humbly go before God and pray earnestly for all things that he has given us. So, you're appreciated. God notices and appreciates every good choice you make throughout your life, even when other people don't. Let me tell you something. I have people in my ear all the time, all the time, telling me, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. And that's okay. I can handle constructive criticism if it's done with grace. I can handle someone giving me counsel. I can handle someone giving me an idea. I can handle someone telling me, um, have, you ever, have you ever looked at it this way, a different objective? But what I can't do is listen to people telling me what to do when God already told me how to do it and what to do it. So if 13 people tell me to go left and God is telling me to go right, I'm going to go right, regardless of what they think or say. Because they don't know me. Just that I may not know every single one of you, but God knows all of us. And let me tell you something about not knowing someone. You don't have to know the full story of someone's struggle. You don't have to know what they have been through. We are called to love each other. Just like the Bishop T.D. Jane said, and I 
rejoiced when he said it. He said, if you're going to love me, you're going to have to love all of me. Just like I have to love all of you. Regardless of how you are, where you are, God knows where you are in your season. If you're having a, a, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, He will command, He will guide, He will send His angels to minister to you. You are not alone. So change the way you live as a result. Exchange grumbling for praying, competing for celebrating, bitterness for thankfulness, performance for serving, boasting for encouraging. Let me tell you something. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, oh God, for this word. I grumble. Who has grumbled? Murmured. Murmuring is only a, it's the way when we murmur. I've done it. I'm sure you have done it. We walk out of the church and we murmur. It is a language that only God can hear. And we grumble when our pastors ask us to do something. I love working for the kingdom of God. If I could do it full time, I would. I'm always thinking about his kingdom. I'm always thinking about, but sometimes I lay around in my bed and I think, I wonder what you're doing right now, God. And then I think to myself, if he was to reveal it to me, my mind would not be able to conceive all of it because he is handling everything that we are in, in this universe. Hallelujah. So, no grumbling. Instead of grumbling, take it to prayer. If you feel that you're competing, instead, celebrate. One thing I always will tell everybody, I am in no competition with nobody. I know my identity. I am happy when your children graduate. I am happy when you get your first home. I am happy when your child gets to go to college. I am happy when you get your, your debt free. I am happy when you get that job that you've been praying for. I am happy every time that you praise. I am happy every time that you preach. I am happy every time that you got blessed. I am happy every single time that you get something that you did not expect from God. I am happy when you get the car that you've always dreamed of, but I am not going to be jealous of you and I am not going to compete with you. If anything, I'm going to celebrate and rejoice with you because the God Almighty has blessed you with all those things so that you can be thankful and I can be thankful and we can celebrate together. Hallelujah. First John 3, 1. See what great love the Father has lavished us that we should be called children of God and that is what we are. In Zechariah 3, 17, the Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. That is one of my favorite scriptures, and I always tell people sometimes, even at night when they text me, may the Lord rejoice over you with singing. Can you imagine God singing over you? What a beautiful and marvelous, majestic thing that is. Thanks to Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, you're saved from sin, death, Satan, your old human nature, and a pattern of worldly living. You can respond in gratitude to your salvation by doing good works. Again, works that God has prepared for you to do, to help others discover relationships with him and help redeem this fallen world. Romans 10, 9 through 10. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved, for it is with 
your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. I have heard stories of people saying that they have gotten cancer and someone in the church told them that's because you were disobedient to God. That is a lie from the pit of hell. That's not the God we serve. Although he could do that if he wanted to. That is God. But he's not going to punish you for something that you have done with an illness that could kill you. Second Corinthians 5.21 God made him whom who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. When Jesus hung on that cross, he paid for the sins of the past, the present, and future. God is not sitting on his throne at this moment, shocked at anything you say or do. He's not looking at Jesus to his right and saying, did you see what he did? He is not shocked by it. He knows the end from the beginning. The response that he's waiting on is for you to respond to him, to become one with him, to repent, to make sure that you're having a daily relationship with Him, that you are praying, that you are praising, that you are worshiping. John 5, 24. Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my words and believes in Him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. Next. You are reconciled. Jesus has spiritually reconciled you to God and other believers. We're one body, one unity in Him, through Him and for Him. Since God's plans for all Christians from all the diverse types of backgrounds on earth, all backgrounds, to live in harmony together in heaven forever. You should do your best to live harmoniously here and now. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you be peaceful, humble, and compassionate towards others. We have to have compassion towards other people. We're so quick to judge, and most of the time we judge because we don't understand. And when we don't understand, we start accusing, we start pointing fingers. Like I said from the beginning, you have no idea what the whole story is. And you don't need to know. God does. Your job is to love them. My job is to love them. Romans 5, 10, 11. For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him to the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now been reconciled. Reconciliation. Hallelujah. Colossians 3.13 Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has grievances against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. You may not get the apology you're looking for. You may not get the speech that you were hoping for. You may not get anything at all from a person who has wronged you. But forgive. Do not become a prisoner. Don't give anyone free rent in your mind. Become free. Let them go. However God chooses to deal with them, that is between them and God. Remember, God says, vengeance is mine, they will repay, says the Lord. If you have to stay silent, stay silent. Become humble and go before the Lord and pray for that person and bless them. And you will see the hand of God move in your favor. And remember that at the end of the day, we also have to remember that that person has a soul and we should be praying for their salvation as well. Praise God. Ephesians 4.32 Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God has forgiven you. You are afflicted. It's the next one. Everyone in this fallen world
world, Christians, non-Christians alike, must endure suffering. Right now, we are suffering. Right now, we are distraught. Right now, we have doubts. Right now, there is fear. Right now, there is lies being told. Right now, there is deceit. Right now, there is a whole bunch of stuff happening in every realm that you can think of. Right now, this whole world has flipped upside down from what we would call normal. There is not going to be any more normal. God is asking us today, build my altars. Build the altar. Whether it's in your house, in your room, in your closet, whatever it is, it is time to build the altar to God. It is now time to know what it's like to go before that altar and fire and go before it and have it consume you. Have it eat at you until you are refreshed, until you are renewed, until you can say praise God and worship Him in spirit and in truth. Rather than asking why, when we suffer, ask who. Instead of shifting your focus from trying to figure out something that you may not be able to understand and towards seeking God himself, who promises to always be with us, ask Jesus to use the suffering you are experienced to make you more like him and point more people to him. I praise God there is a worship song that I listen to all the time once in a while that I need to hear to remind me of who I am in Christ. And it's called Storyteller. I am a person of words. Words affect me. So I like to tell stories. And praise be to God that now my story points to Him. So whenever I talk about my past, whenever I talk about what God has done, whatever God is doing, whatever He's about to do, it all points to Jesus. 1 Peter 5, 8 through 10. Be alert and so remind your enemy, not God's enemy, your enemy. There is no, God has no enemy. There is no one like him. No one is seated. No one is above him. So it's our enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in faith, because you know that the family of believers through the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. What we're suffering here is suffering in Africa. What's suffering here is suffering in South America. What is suffering here is suffering in Asia. Throughout the four corners of the world, there is suffering. And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. 2 Corinthians 4, 16-17 Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away. Yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. By our light in the momentary troubles are achieving for us as an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me, in me, Jesus, you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So being one with him, we will be at peace knowing that everything that is going on has a purpose, but we are at peace with him because regardless of what happens, whether we lose our life, inwardly we have already been wrong, he will complete what he started in you. You are heard. One of the things that every human being has in common is that we all want to be validated. We all want to be heard. And sometimes we go about it the wrong way. Sometimes we choose to tell people the wrong people. Uh, and most often than not, we battle with 
with it in our lives? Am I being heard? Am I being seen? I see you. I hear you. I pray for you. God always hears and responds to your prayers when you're connected to him through Jesus. Feel free to com confidently express any of your uh, thoughts and feelings to God at any time, expecting him to listen to you and answer your prayers according to what's best for you. What is best for you. <laughs> Something that amazes me about God is that I can talk to him at any given moment. I could be working, I could be having a conversation with someone and in my mind I am praying. In my mind I'm having a full conversation with him. Then in my spirit is having a conversation with him. And when I don't have the words and I go before God with fear and trembling, crying my eyes out for whatever reason, my tears tell the story. God says that he holds our, our tears in a jar. Father, we thank you, oh God, because you do hear us. Jeremiah 29, 12 through 13. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me. This is where the altar comes in. And I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. All of your heart. Woo, hallelujah. When we say all of the heart, you have to believe. You have to believe. You can't be wishy-washy. You have to know that the God of the universe who spoke everything into existence can handle your circumstances, can handle all your troubles. Stand tall, rise up, and realize who you are. You're a child of God. First Peter 3.12 for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. 1 John 5.15 And if we know that he hears us, which we already know, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. Most of the time, we ask for things to God. It's, it, there's, you know, it's funny, I was having a conversation with my mother just yesterday about when God says no. And when God says no, it's because he has something much greater for you. I'm going to tell you a little story real quick. It's kind of funny that God brought it up to my mind, and I thank you, God. About eight years ago, <coughs> excuse me, I wanted to purchase a radio to uh, listen to worship music in my own personal bedroom. And so I went around shopping, I checked, and I went to a store here that's called Big Lots. And I saw a radio that was on sale, and I picked it up to put it in the car, and I heard that voice that said, uh-uh, put it back. Do not buy it. And I was like, okay, Lord. Because I knew it was God. And I was about to spend money on something. And the radio, to be honest with you, wasn't really all that great. It was just something that I wanted to have in my room that could play CDs, etc. So the very next day, I am at church in my office. And one of our sisters comes in. And uh, she just happened to drop by after work. And she was like, Pastor Carlos, I'm so glad to see you. I wanted to ask you a question. And I said, OK. Um, she said, do you want a radio? I have this radio at home. Um, and I, I don't know what to do with it, so I'll bring it to you tomorrow. Now, mind you, the day before, I was at the store wanting a radio. But I completely forgot about that. So the very next day, she comes after work with this big tub. And I'm like, good Lord, what kind of radio is this? She said, it's yours. I, I don't know how to use it, and I think that it will be great for you. And as soon as I opened it, I started to cry. 
This woman gave me a brand new Bose surround sound system with DVD, CD, anything. And if you have ever looked what a Bose system costs, I think the cheapest is $2,500. And I started to cry because I remembered standing in that store and God said, no, put it back. He has something better in mind for me. He has something greater for me. He had something that was even more value than what I was about to spend my little money on. So when we ask, he gives us, but sometimes he says no, because he has something greater for us. We praise your holy name. Next, you are gifted. God has given you social abilities that he wants you to use in the Christian ministry work. He called you to do both inside the church and out in the community. You can discover those gifts by asking him questions like whom, where do you have a passion to serve? What do you have a burden to do? What makes you angry in the sense of saying, if I had the power to change that, what would I do? If I could just go out and feed the hungry, if I could just go out and save somebody from suicide, if I could go out and somebody and convince them that they no longer have to be dependent on a drug or alcohol or cigarettes or anything else in the world to survive, what if I had the power to change things? This is what God is telling us. What needs to do you see in the church? Does the church need cleaning? Does the, the, the lawn need mowing? Do the windows need to be clean? Does the pastor need assistance with something? Do you work for the kingdom of God or do you just sit at home and ponder and wishy-wash and never finish what you ever started? God looks upon all those things. God loves the diligent. So, what do you find joy in doing for others? I like to give. If I have all the kinds of stuff, I would give all that I love to give. I love to see people smile. I love to see people rejoice. I love to see when God says, bless this person, and you bless them, and you see the fruit that comes out of that, and you just give God thanks, and you praise them, and you say, God, you are something else, because I had no idea. I was just being obedient to you, but I see with my own eyes that you were thinking way above anything that I could possibly think. Hallelujah. What opportunities has God already provided for you to serve others? Are you able to worship? Are you able to be an intercessor? Are you able to be a prophet? Are you a teacher, a pastor? What is your calling? It's time to ask God, what do you want me to do? What opportunities has God already provided for you to serve others? Meaning you already possess it because you are already gifted. What things are best at and have the most success in? What, what things are you best at and have the most success in? What acts of service have given you the deepest sense of satisfaction? So we go to Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. It is already there. All we have to do is pull it down from the heavenlies and say, I got this, God. Guide me through it. Help me through it. Give me wisdom. Give me knowledge. Give me discernment. Let me grow. Let me go. Here I am. Send me. Let me do it for your glory and for your honor and nothing else. I'm going to add to that. Never let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. Not everybody needs to know what God sent you to do. Not everything needs to be posted on social media. God sees what you do. God sees our hearts and we see faces. <coughs> So, in 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. 
If anyone speaks, they should do so as one speaks. The very word of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides. The strength that God provides. The strength that God provides. So that in all things, in all things, in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Romans 12, 4 through 8. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we through many forms one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If you're going to prophesy and your faith is this low, your prophecy is going to be just that low. But if you have faith that can move mountains, your prophecy will move that mountain. And it will move that mountain and the other one behind it. Now, in accordance with your faith, in accordance with your faith, if it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, if it is to lead, do it diligently. If it shows to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Hallelujah. You are near. Jesus placed a new spirit within you when you began a relationship with him. So that at your core, your core. You are a new person than you than you were before you became a Christian. However, you will keep learning and growing every day for the rest of your life as he as you gradually become more like Jesus. Second Corinthians 5:17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, their new creation has come. The old has gone, and the new is here. The new is here. The new is here. The new is here. If God has given you an assignment as a pastor, as a teacher, as a prophet, as an apostle, as an evangelist, it is here. Complete your assignment. It is here. First Peter 1 Peter 1.3 Praise be to God and the Father for our Lord Jesus Christ and His great mercy has given us new birth into living, a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4, 22-24 We are taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self which is being corrupted by deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your mind and put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness and put on the new self put on love, put on compassion, put on faith put on believing, put on all that stuff, put on the full armor of God and walk with your head held high knowing that you are, you are gifted thank you God for your God, your grace Thank you, God, for your holiness. Thank you, God, for your son, Jesus Christ. Next, you are forgiven. Jesus paid the price that God justice demands for your sins and took God's wrath for you upon himself. You are forgiven for all your sins, past, present, and future, as I mentioned earlier. When you have placed your trust in Jesus, you can thank Jesus for giving you by obeying his commands to forgive others who have harmed you and seek forgiveness from the people you harmed. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4.32 Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ God forgave you. 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Psalm 103, 11 through 12, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for us, for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, 
so far has he removed our transgressions from us. East from the west means endless. It has no ending. Hallelujah. You are adopted. As a Christian, you have been adopted into God's family. The work of your big brother, Jesus. And the cross has made it possible for you to become one of the sons or daughters of God. God and the Father. So make your main goal of life learning how to know, love, and trust God as your Father. I know of a lady that prays Jesus all the time. This is the story that was told to me. But she wouldn't go to the Father. And that person asked this person, why? Why not? But like God is God. Jesus is God. She's like, yeah, but I, I, I have problems with, with the authority and, and the and men who are fathers. This came from a trauma that happened to her. And so she never knew how to go to the Father through Jesus. She just went to Jesus. And finally she was delivered and received the love of God through Jesus Christ. Amazing God. You're an amazing God. We praise your holy name. So, you are adopted. Romans 8, 15 through 17. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. When you walk into a place, when you walk into a store, when you walk into your job, when you walk into a family gathering, you can hold your head up high because the Holy Spirit is letting everybody know that's a child of God. You don't need to say it. It will be evident by the way you walk, by the way you talk, by the way you think, by the way that you do things. It will be evident that we are children of God when we do these things. Hallelujah. So, we cry, Our Father, the Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit, God's children. That we are children, that we are heirs, heirs of God and co heirs, co heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in His suffering, in order that we may also share His glory. Share in his glory, excuse me, in his glory, not our glory, in his glory. Galatians 3, 26 through 29. So in Christ Jesus, uh, all children of God through faith, for all you have were baptized in Christ and have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for we are all one in Christ. Jesus, if you belong, if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And in according to that promise, we live on. Thank you, Lord. We praise your holy name. We thank you for your word, oh God. We thank you for your word. Hallelujah. So now, Ephesians 1, 4 through 5. For he chose us, chose us, chose, I'm sorry. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love to be predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with this pleasure, with his pleasure and will. You are loved. Oh my God. Oh my God, are we loved. How mindful are you of us, oh God, that even the angels don't understand. Not even the angels were made in his likeness. How mindful are you of us, oh Jesus. We praise you, oh God. You are loved. While the people who love you can't do completely, unselfishly, continually, or perfectly, God does. As 
Christians, nothing can ever separate us from, the God, from God's love, from his great love for each and every single one of us. He doesn't have favorites. Romans 8, 37 through 39. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither present nor future, not, nor po any power, neither any height or depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate you from that love unless you reject it. You are rewarded. Oh God Almighty, how you reward us all the time and we don't even thank you. Forgive us, oh God. God will reward you for everything faithful and holy that you do as a Christian. Although you can earn it, you can't earn your salvation after you've been saved, you can earn rewards in heaven for the work you do serving God on earth. Colossians 3:20. 3.23 to 24. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as if you're working for the Lord, not for human matters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Whew. Galatians 6.9 Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time, we will really harvest if we do not give up. Next, you are victorious. We are victorious. And when I say you, I'm including myself. This ministered to me too. And I praise God because I am just like, Lord, every time we prepare a message and you give a message, you minister to us and you deal with us and in our hearts and our minds and we're able to preach this word, hallelujah, and we thank you, O oh God. You are victorious. Jesus has given you the power to ultimately overcome evil, sin, and death. Use the spiritual weapons at your disposal as a Christian. Truth, righteousness, the gospel of faith, salvation, scripture, prayer, and the strength to stand in spiritual battles, trusting that you can always emerge victorious. 1 John 5, 4, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even in our faith. 1 John, I'm sorry, John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me, in Jesus, you may have peace in this world. You will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. So, in doing so, the last scripture, and there's something else that I will share in closing with you. 1 Corinthians 15, 55 through 57, it says, Oh, where are you, death? It's your victory. Where, oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you, O oh God. We thank you for your son. We thank you for the guidance of your Holy Spirit, the intercessions that are going on. For those praying for each and every single one of us, we send out blessings their way in the name of Jesus. Father God, bless them, increase their territory, and protect them, O oh God. We thank you for every intercessor, every prophet, every apostle, every pastor, every evangelist, and every teacher that is doing good works for your kingdom, O oh God. We ask you, O oh God, to pour out blessings upon them, Lord, and let them bless others as you see fit, O oh God. Now, we struggle with identity. I struggled with my identity for many, many years, even when I became Christian. And even at times now, as I'm being transparent, I question that. So one day as I was uh, 
doing some research and uh, had to deal with a young person who was dealing with an identity crisis, um, or more so, um, another one who was dealing with a sexual identity crisis. They didn't know who they are. And so the advice that I give is take Psalm 139. If you have to write it out, if you have to print it out from a computer, what, however it is that you choose to uh, have it, post it somewhere where you can read it daily. If you're having an issue with struggling with believing that you're a child of God, after you read it, say, I'm a child of God. If you're struggling with the identity of being a man, at the end, say, I am a man. I am a man. If you're struggling with the identity of being a female, after you read it, say, I am a female. And so it says, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me to love thee for me to attain. Where can I grow? Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. You are right, your right hand will uphold me fast. What is God's right hand? Jesus. Even in the darkness, you will make, even in the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is a light to you. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days I ordained for me and were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. When I count them, they will outnumber the grains of sand. Then I awake and I am still with you. If you, God, you slay the wicked away from me, you who are bloodthirsty, they speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and I'll honor those who are rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them as my enemies. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there are any offensive ways in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. That is our identity. If you're struggling with that, read that every single day. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God makes no mistakes. Father God, I thank you for this word. I exalt your holy name above all names of Jesus. Father, we thank you, God, for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Jesus, because you are a friend, you are a redeemer, you are a mighty counselor, you are the 
friend of ours that can lean, that we can lean upon, Father. We thank you for your son because your son is the Prince of Peace, the bright and morning star. And there's nothing that he does not understand. He understands everything in us. And we thank you, God, that we have him. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who protects us, who guides us, who speaks to us, who tells us, don't do that, do this, do it this way. Today is today. Wake up, rise up. We thank you for all that you do, oh God, in every single way, in every single day, for every hour, for every minute, for everything that you do. We praise your holy name. We exalt you, Father. We exalt your holy name and we thank you. We thank you, oh God. We praise you. We praise your holy name. May God bless you, shine his face upon you, grant you peace, protect you, and be with you always. Listen to his voice. Spend time with him. It's time to build that altar in your homes. Because pretty soon we're not going to have altars to go to if things keep going the way they're going. But praise be to God that we can always go boldly before his throne. So in your secret place, create your altar to God that you can praise, that you can worship, that you can pray, that you can intercede that you can write things down, you can become creative, and you can ask God to give you vision, to tell you things that you have never heard before, that you can rise up as a new creation, that you are gifted, that you are loved, that you are saved, that you are the one that God rewards, you are the one that, you, that he adopted, you are the one who is forgiven, you are the one who is new, you are the one who is gifted with so many things. You are the one who is heard. You are the one who is afflicted. You are the one who God has chosen. God has chosen each and every one of us. You are reconciled. You are saved. You are appreciated. You are blessed. You are a saint. And so therefore, God, we praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. I'll see you next time. And remember, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you can get the notifications every time we upload something new to you. Oh God, we praise you and we thank you. God bless you.